Right, pay attention you horrible lot, I'll be giving away this i3T from Olight in today's video. Well, today's video itself, but if you pay attention to the details in the video's description, you can win it. Simple as that. What is coming up in this video is my first impressions on the Thermion 2 rifle scope. We get it mated to the HMR and take it down the golf club for a smashing time on the rabbits. We'll take a little look at some of the features, advantages and benefits of this amazing thermal scope. This is Team Foxer. On top of my 17 HMR for tonight's episode, I've got the brand new Pulsar Thermion 2. Um, the thermal rifle scope from Pulsar. And to put it to the test, we're going after some rabbits. So I've come down to my usual sighting in place uh, to zero the rifle at 75 yards, and then we're gonna pop to the golf course to see if we can thin out a couple of the rabbits. Now, I have made one slight boo-boo. Some of you may be aware that I'm also upgrading my thermal binoculars from the current Accolade or the Accolades that I had to the brand new Accolade Pros. The only thing is the Pros are not yet in stock, not until the end of this month. So, although we've got some brand new tech, we're actually going old school to look for the rabbits. That's right, so we're gonna be lamping, looking for the eye shine, and then flipping over to the Thermion scope to take a couple of the rabbits. Hopefully we're able to get some footage for you as well as some rabbits. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my brief overview and certainly my first impressions of this scope. Let's get this sighted in. Now with this being a thermal scope, you simply can't use a conventional target. So I've got these heat sensitive patches. They're a little bit like hand warmers that I put on my target at 75 yards to help zero it. Now this isn't gonna be a review like every single review video you see on YouTube. I'm not gonna do an unboxing. If any of you particularly want to see that from myself, I'll put a separate video up. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see that. If not, I'll not bore you to death with what comes in the box. The important thing is we get it sighted in. I take three shots, uh, and as you'll see in a minute, it's quite windy, it's not ideal conditions for a HMR, but um, this is my only sort of sighting in place that I know the distance is on. Um, so I take three shots here on target, and as you can see, we are probably about half an inch um, to the right. Now that could be wind but it shouldn't affect it too much at 75 yards so um, I'll let Mark sight his rifle in and then I take another shot um, after moving the crosshairs a half an inch to the right and there you can see it is pretty much bang on. We arrive at the golf course a little bit before dark to have a cup of tea and a catch up before we wait for the night to set in and we find out what this Thermion scope's all about. The ammunition of choice for tonight's excursion is the Hornaday 17 grain uh, ballistic tip rounds and I'm also upgrading the magazine to the 10 shot magazine for this outing. I picked the wrong night clearly, it was a stupidly bright moon even though you can't see it on the camcorder in night vision mode here as Mark films me stalking in to my very first rabbit. There weren't too many rabbits around. There has been a family of foxes on here, but I do spot one, take aim and squeeze the trigger. Now this particular rabbit, unbeknown to me, was actually quite deep in the foliage, even though the rabbit stands out pretty well here. It's about 55 yards and it goes down with a pretty definitive headshot. I couldn't quite see it. It looked like it was in some fairly dense undergrowth. Hey. Jesus. Oh, yeah. 
Now I'm sure plenty of you would like to see the damage that a 17 HMR can do to a rabbit, and I'm sure a lot of you would actually know. I can't actually show the gory bits because YouTube is run by snowflakes. Well, it's also run by snowflakes, and there are lots of snowflakes that seek these videos out, just to give us all a bit of a hard time. Now, I did spot a couple of munchak here at just shy of 70 yards, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show the differences and some of the menu features uh, that are on the scope. Here, I'm selecting the different preset contrast. Now, what that does, if you look at the trees in the background, is actually uh, make the foliage stand out a little bit different. The animals themselves clearly glowing nice and hot. I also take this opportunity to show you the different stages of zoom. It goes in two, uh, which is the base mag, to four, to eight, all the way up to 16. And certainly animals that are sub 100 yards, you really don't notice much in the way of pixelation at all. If you compare that to one of the main competitors, I suppose, of the Pulsar scope, the difference here, I think you'll see for yourself. Now, accessing the menu and navigating through it is pretty good, easy and intuitive using this jog dial wheel on the side. Here you can see me selecting the different colour palettes. Now, once again, the different colour palettes, as you'll notice on the black hot, I think makes the animal stand out incredibly well against uh, foliage in particular. But you have a plethora of colour palettes to choose one that best suits your own preference. Similarly, you have a multitude of different crosshairs and indeed crosshair colour options. Here you can see me selecting the circle with the very tiny cross in the middle of it. Now, some of the lighter colours, you couldn't quite see that cross very well. So I think it was when I found the white cross with the black, uh, sorry, the white crosshair with the black centre uh, using the white hot colour combo, you can see just how well uh, you can get a nice pinpoint accurate uh, crosshair standing out against your target. And it was that crosshair that I used for the remainder of this session, as this rabbit here hides behind a young tree sapling. I can just see enough of it to shoot that one in the head. Now, you don't have to take the shots with the picture-in-picture -picture screen, which you can see there, but I think when you've got the beauty of a wide field of view and a zoomed-in picture of just your crosshairs, uh, I think it gives you the best of both worlds. If this rabbit, if I was to miss this rabbit and it run off, the small picture-in-picture -picture would be too small. Now this is a bit of a rarity, you don't actually get to see too many badgers uh, around these parts, but this one here bombing across the golf course, you can see uh, the differences in the temperature on the badger's coat there, as you could see which parts were better insulated than the others. Here's a couple of good headshots now on rabbits that were just uh, in the neighbouring field, which has just been freshly planted with potatoes. So these rabbits are sitting in the potato rows, and you can only get through to the head. So I think the first one there is around 60 yards and the next one is about 10 yards further on. Pretty much bang on my zero point. Well, those two stood out well here in the potato rows. Not too far, probably. Well, we'll have a look in a minute. We'll walk it back, same row actually. One. I've had too much of that, it's a mess. One, two. Left his brain. Just see the truck over there. Just pulled in the field, literally. Well, it was a brief session here on the golf course on the rabbits using the Thermion. Um, we've ended up with seven, so not a bad result, but let's head back inside where we will have um, a better summary of the Thermion's first outing. See you in a second. Well, thank you to myself. Right, we should probably start with a bit of an update. All of that footage was filmed several weeks ago now, so the eagle-eyed amongst you have probably spotted that I have now taken delivery of the new Pulsar Accolade Pros. Um, phenomenal spotter so if you want to see 
Um, well, in fact, two things. If you want to see a separate review video of that, please let me know in the comments below, uh, and I'll gladly give everybody a, a good walk around of the unit. I have been out foxing with it um, a couple of times, but um, I am struggling to get out at the minute. I've also got a new job over the last few weeks, uh, so good news there, but the bad news is it's taking up quite a lot of my time. So um, gathering footage may prove difficult um, with the combination of it not getting dark until 9.30 at night, the crops are really tall, plus uh, I'm putting in the hours at work. That said, I'll still do my very best to bring you what footage I have managed to accumulate over the past month or so. I've also been fairly busy testing some of the new Olight products that we've got out. So we've got the new Baton 3 um, orange one that goes on sale on the 27th. So again, I'll have a separate video of that. Check out the link in the video's description for your discount code. And uh, again, check out the video's description. There is a very simple task there where I'm going to give this i3T away completely free to one of my viewers. So the Pulsar Thermion 2 rifle scope, well first and foremost, before I'd even got my hands on the scope, looking at the forums and I kind of, even myself, wanted to know what the difference was between a previous generation and this newer one, um, a couple of the same things kept cropping up and they were often the main generic answers and they were that it's got a new F1.0 2 times germanium lens. Oh right, great. Uh, and what else has it got? It has a new sub 25 millikelvin sensor. Well, they both sound very interesting, but what the f does that actually mean? Well, to put it simply and to best understand it, essentially the f1.0 uh, two times germanium lens means it's got really good aperture. And in photography, aperture is everything. Aperture allows light through a camera lens. The better or more sensitive the aperture, the more light can get through uh, and the better quality the image. The sub 25 millikelvin sensor is in essence simply more sensitive to that information so it's able to depict differences in temperature better than the previous sensor. So those two things combined if you imagine you've got more light coming in or in a thermal rifle scopes case you've got more light radiation coming in and then you have a sensor that is able to better depict or better decipher that information displaying it to the eyepiece which is a super AMOLED really clear display eyepiece. Let me give you a scenario where those two differences would actually make quite a big difference. If you're out looking for a deer on a dewy morning when their moisture is over everything, it's over the grass, over the trees, over the rocks, etc. Because of the moisture and because it's been there all night, effectively, everything's going to look the same temperature through a conventional thermal rifle scope. I know that with the old accolades, if you went out on a very humid evening or again in dewy conditions, uh, the atmospheric conditions meant that everything looked rather hazy. The sub 25 millikelvin sensor being more sensitive to those differences in temperature means it's able to depict them and display them on the Super AMOLED display, meaning that you can still see outlines of trees, foliage, and then of course when you get the heat source of an animal walking by, it shines up like a beacon of light. So I've been fortunate enough to have been out with it on several occasions predominantly rabbiting. Now I have seen foxes through it, but they were at quite some distance. So when you actually play the footage back, um, through the eyepiece it's nice and clear, but when you play the footage back uh, on a laptop, when you've got a fox at probably five or 600 yards, as it was in the case with the one we saw, um, it probably doesn't look that clear, of course. But the things I love about the scope, the first one I'm gonna talk about is build quality. This thing is incredibly robust right from the lens cap at the front of the scope um, to the focusing, it, it needs very little movement to adjust. Again, one of the things with the, um, the new lens is you need very, very fine adjustments on here to get it nicely focused. So you're not permanently trying to um, go through a massive kind of turn just to get that image nice and crisp. Simply a very small twist of the focus thing here, uh, the focus ring, sorry. Um, and that image will come nice and sharp very quickly indeed. It is quite firm, but I guess that will probably um, loosen off after time. Similar, list or, or similar story, should I say, with the battery cap. 
Uh, the battery cap is pretty solid and I believe you actually get a spare one of those that they supply with it just in case you lose that. Uh, the battery fits in uh, well and then it's a very positive um, lock actually when that cap goes in. Same with the USB cap on that side. Yeah, It's quite firm uh, and it's got a very positive lock on it. Um, button operation, pretty intuitive. Um, I did the typical bloke thing really, didn't need to read the user manual. Having had um, a couple of Pulsar products in, in the past, uh, the menu system is quite intuitive, very easy to use. Um, you use the button on the side here um, to push in and then scroll up and down through the menu as you perhaps saw in the video. Um, and then I guess because you've got the menu system completely separate from your top buttons here, you literally have your power button to turn it on and off and it will actually turn on pretty quick even better than that, see it's already clicked on. Um, putting it into standby mode, um, again, very quick and easy to do. One touch recording, it's pretty instantaneous. You don't have to hold your, your finger down on it for any length of time, just a quick tap and it'll start to record. Tap it again to stop recording. One of the other features overlooked, yes, it's on 30 mil rings, but look at the amount of spacing of tube that you have. I don't know how wide that is, you know, I'm not that good with measurements as my missus will tell you. Um, but I would suggest you've probably got a good three and a half inches worth um, of tube either side. So my Lithgo, Lithgow, however you want to pronounce it, has very kind of, it's very short mounting brackets. Okay, you've only literally got, you can only mount it there and there, you don't have any other option. Um, and so it has a relatively long eye relief from the butt of the stock. Um, so I did have to mount the rear bracket, as you can see, pretty damn close uh, to the central turrets here. But it did give me, um, you know, it's straight on these kind of slightly, uh, I think these are medium mounts, uh, and it's given me a perfect kind of alignment, eye alignment. Um, yeah, really straightforward to mount, very simple. Um, as well. Very, very easy to zero. Really difficult to try and film that, if I'm honest, because um, you can't record and change the zero points all at the same time. You can go through the menu, as you saw in the video, but that is one thing um, you can't do um, with that. Not that it really makes much of a difference, but as you saw, um, yes, it's it's got a one-shot zero, but I mean, I've used several scopes now that, that are a one-shot zero, and personally, I always like to put a good three or four down just to get it um, absolutely bob on um, as well before I go out shooting. The array of colour palettes is a really big plus point for the scope. Um, it's quite surprising actually that um, the different colour palettes uh, will allow you to see slightly more detail in certain scenarios and different backgrounds. So, so don't just take for granted that you've only got the three or four uh, contrast preset options. Uh, because if you change the different colour palettes, you will start to see slightly different detail. So don't be afraid um, to kind of change things up a bit and go for a, a fairly quirky palette um, if you're doing a particular type of shooting. Um, you, do have, you do have completely manual override, so you can set your own presets up um, you know, and, and your preferences. It's something I haven't played around with a great deal um, and certainly got much of it on film, but the last time I was out with it, I actually decided uh, to go with the black hot with a white background, and I think in a tree or like a foresty type environment, that allows you to see animals far clearer than actually like I did on this video where you've got the white hot. And, you, and the reason you can see that detail is that sensor that's able to pick off the differential heats uh, the differences, sorry, in the heat that come off of the different animals. I think it was the badger that went past um, on the golf course. I could see, certainly in the eyepiece, and, and, and I hope it comes out on video, you could definitely see that on his back, which parts of the fur were better insulated than others. Certainly on the previous generation accolade, you wouldn't have seen that level of detail. So that's um, that's a clear indication that the, that the sensor um, the sensor and lens combo are definitely working and you're able to get a much crisper image. So in short, having used the previous generation and having used a couple of scopes from other manufacturers, I can confidently say that this is to date the best thermal scope that I have personally used and I'll be very sorry to have to send it back. 
it's a little unfortunate the timing that I've had this scope to play with, uh, with the new job, the weather, uh, which has been terrible over this last few weeks, uh, because my the best ratting uh, I've, I've had, you know, was a few weeks before I got this scope. Uh, and certainly the foxing is really difficult with the crops at the moment and certainly it not getting dark until really, really late. So fingers crossed I'll be allowed to have this scope back um, towards the end of the year or early next where I can bring you some fantastic ratting footage and I would love to get out and do a good session on the foxes with it as well. Well, it's that time where I will bid all of you a very good evening. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe and as always, Happy shooting. I'll see you in the next one.